Good evening, good evening everyone. This is Robert Brown. I'm thankful for those of you that are with me in this study. It's a very important study. This is very important. Of course, all of them are, but uh, I want us to understand the, this church age and the kingdom of heaven that will merge into the kingdom of God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you again thanking you for this privilege. Thank you, Lord, always for life, a reasonable portion of, of health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for showing love to those of us that we, we're not really worthy, but you loved us with a, a, a love beyond our own understanding. Forgive me for all my sins, trespasses, thoughts, actions, deeds. Wash me, Lord, thoroughly with the Holy Spirit. Father, those that I've, I've prayed for and still praying for, I ask that you look, at, look into every situation. I see you, the hospitals, some, some are home, but Father, I'm not going to call, I'm not going to throw the names out there because we need to, when, when someone asks us to pray, they didn't ask others to, but I'm, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for what you're doing. Now, Lord, as we go into this word, as usual, I ask you to take me out of myself. Hide me in this word. Hide me behind the cross. Hide me behind the blood. Let not my flesh be on parade. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen and amen. Good evening, the Lord. You're the first one. Well, you might not be the only one watching. I've, I've discovered that there are many, including a childhood friend, that he's also a brown, that's been watching me all along. But Bradley, if you're watching, I thank God for you. And I, I want you, I told you, please have your Bibles. This is going to be an in-depth study. And I don't know how many weeks it's going to take because after we talk about this 24th and 25th chapter, the kingdom of God, we've got to go back and talk about the parables again because Jesus will lose after he talks about the kingdom of God in the 24th chapter, he goes back and talks about the kingdom of heaven in the 25th chapter. He reiterates you know, what we need to do to, to, to enter the kingdom. He said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom. Good evening, Nadine. You and your sister are the first to to come on these and I'm not going to call that many names because this is going on YouTube and it, and I, I pray that you are discipline yourself to study when we get off here and go back and look over these scriptures so that you can disciple others. We're we're supposed to make disciples. If you make the disciples I'll teach them, you know. If you have the if you have the sheep, I'll teach the sheep. Now, we say we're going to talk about the 24th and 25th chapter of Matthew, and I think it's important that those of you that listen understand that Jesus never at any time, he did not at any time talk about the rapture. He preached the kingdom. He came preaching to Israel. And this 24th and 25th chapter is directed to his people only after he appeared behind closed doors and, and after he got up and, and said receive ye the Holy Ghost were the disciples commissioned to go to the Gentiles he breathed on them and said, said, said go in, into all the world to make disciples teaching them to observe the things that I'm teaching you, teaching them to observe, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. Now, before we look at this 24th chapter, 
I told you on my Facebook page that Jesus had eight woes to the leadership, the scribes and the Pharisees. When you go back to chapter 23, because, G, because uh, Jesus had spoke to the multitude and he let them know that the scribes and the Pharisees desired to take over leadership. They, they want to sit in Moses' seat. And he, he told them, don't be called rabbis, which they, which they do now, the, uh, or, or master, because one is your master. Uh, but let's look at what the first woe, because he was trying to get these scribes and Pharisees to humble themselves as leaders. Because in that 12 verse, he said, Whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased or humbled. And he that shall arm themselves shall be exalted. Promotion comes from God. Promotion comes from God alone. But look at verse 23. We, we're going to spend about five minutes. Good, good evening, all, all of you. Woe unto you, <clears throat> to you, scribes and Pharisees. And what does he call them? Hypocrites. Hypocrites are actors. You, they, they are not right, and they don't want anybody else to be right. He said, you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. The kingdom of heaven is right now. The, no, the church age, he wasn't, he wasn't talking about the church age, but the church age has moved into the kingdom of heaven. And he let them know, you, you're just preaching for profit, basically, because you're not going in yourself, and you don't... And, and and you're preventing those that want to to go, but in by your example, you're a hypocrite. Verse fourteen: Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You devour widows' houses, and for preachers make long prayers. Well, well, y'all quit doing that in church. When they ask you to pray. They didn't ask you for a sermon or, or <laughs> they asked you to pray. And it, it doesn't take a long, you shouldn't pray longer than the preacher preaches. But you said for a pretense you make long prayers. <laughs> it's just a pretense. And because of your pretense, what does the last part of verse 14 say? You're going to receive the greater damnation. I'm talking about scribes and Pharisees, false preachers. Fifteen. War to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you go around. You see, we're on Facebook now. Pass land and see and, and make proselytes. You know, you're, you're bringing folk to Christ. A proselyte were, were Gentiles that, that, that uh, were, came to Judaism. But we're supposed to bring folk to Christ. But once they, he is converted, what happened? What happened in verse 15? You make him twice more a child of hell than you. He's calling him a child of hell. And now you've you got children following you by your example. Woe unto you. He didn't say scribes and Pharisees. He said, Blind guides, the blind leading the blind, and it, if one falls in the ditch, somebody's gonna fall in the ditch. The blind leading the blind. That'd be just like Stevie Wonder trying trying to get in a in a car and and direct you to get from Rock Hill to my hometown of Galax, Virginia. And oh, I swear to God, this temple is great, Saint Paul, Saint Peter. You swear by the temple, and it's nothing. It's just a building. And whatsoever and whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he's a debtor. That's your, that's your God. You fools and blind for what is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifies the gold? The temple is a holy place. 
I'm not going to read it, though. He, he says in verse 23, Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees, you pay your tithe, uh, uh, the mint and, and the niece and cumin. Yeah, that's good. You, you, bring it, you bring it in every day of the sun and have omitted the weighter matters of the law. Judgment begins at the house of God. Give mercy, faith. These are things you have done, you should have done, and, and not to leave the other undone. Strain it a net and swallow a camel. Twenty-five. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You look good on the outside, the outside of the cup and the platter, but, but inside you're just as crooked as you want to be, full of extortion. Uh, sow a seed. If y'all don't keep your money in your pocket, don't 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 send fuck your money. If I, I I'll probably ask you later on to to help me with a with a project with a ministry I have, but I'm not gonna tell you sow a seed. I'm gonna ask ask you to help me. It's just that simple. But they are full of extortion and excess. You blind Pharisee. Clean yourself up. If you get the inside clean, then the outside will be clean. You'll be able to represent who Jesus is. Two more woes. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You're like whited selfishness, tombstones that mark, marks the grave. No, no, they, they, they're beautiful. They're beautiful. On the outside, those tombstones are beautiful. But in that grave, it's full of what? Dead men's bones and their molding and the, the skin worms. Full of uncleanness. And, and look what he says about, about them preachers, scribes, Pharisees in verse 28. Even so ye all, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men. But within, you're full of hypocrisy and iniquity, just like that grace. Stinking bones, stinking bodies. And the, and the last one, verse 29, 23 and 29, warrant these scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets, and you built, put pretty tombstones around it. You garnish the suffrage of the righteous, and you say, oh, if we had been in the days of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Elijah, Ezekiel. No, no. If, you, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with those folk in sin and kill the prophets. And Jesus said, wherefore be ye witnesses unto yourselves that you are the children of killers, of them that kill the prophets. And he called them, you serpents, you generation of vipers. Your generation, that means your daddy, your granddaddy, your great-granddaddy, your great-great-great-granddaddy. If you got any children, we're, in, we're, we're starting in, in chapter 23. Chapter 23. And we're getting ready to get, get in 24. He said, you're a gen generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? He's talking about leadership. Leadership. Because he sent the prophets, he sent the wise men, he sent the scribes, and you killed them. Now, now, we're getting ready. Jerusalem is the city of God. Jerusalem. Look, look. And what he says about Jerusalem in the 37th verse. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets. And you stone the folk that, that have come to you. And how often would they have gathered that children together? You're scattered, Israel, right now. You're scattered. And I wanted to bring you back to me. How often I wanted to do that. 
even as a hen gathered chickens under her wings, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't obey, you wouldn't let me. So now, the same house, he says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Uh-uh, not anymore. He vacated. Behold, your house. You want it? You got it. You want to be the big shot? The pastor? Ex officio? Okay, you want it? There it is. Your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, to he left. You shall not see me anymore till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. He's saying, You're not going to see me anymore till after the church age is gone, is raptured, this kingdom of heaven merges into the king, king, kingdom of God after the tribulation period. You're not going to see me on earth anymore till that happens. Now, Let's look at chapter 24. And Jesus went out, and what he did, he departed. My spirit shall not always strive with man. He departed from the temple. And his disciples, they were still looking at the physical. These great orifices, these, these great buildings that, 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 that uh, you see now, it's full, it's full. And they came to him to show him the buildings, not the temple, the, the, the buildings of, around the, the buildings of the temple. And he said unto them, <laughs> you see these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He prophesied what was going to happen went to, to Herod's temple. He was letting them know that that temple would be, uh, would be destroyed. And it, those of you that, that know history, in 70 A.D., his prophecy was fulfilled. In Luke uh, 21, verse 20 through 24, it says, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, know that the desolation, therefore, is not. Know that the tribulation is close. The tribulation. And he further said that Jerusalem would be destroyed, as it was in 70 A.D. The Jew and the Jews themselves would fall by the sword and led away captive among all nations. They're scattered right now. They don't, they don't have a homeland. I know what the government says, that they became a nation in 1948, that, which they did not. That will be a miracle of God, which we will discuss. That will be a miracle of God that will happen in one day, miraculously. No airplanes, no buses. They will be gathered. They will, they, they, uh, the Valley of Dry Bones talks about this. Can these bones live? Lord, thou knowest. And he gathered them bone to their bone, flesh to their flesh. And they were led away captive among all nations until what is called the time of the Gentiles would be fulfilled. Right now is the time of the Gentiles. Right now, when because the disciples went and preached to all nations as Jesus commanded, right now, since this thing is going out to the whole nation, the, the, the Gentiles have come to Christ, and they have been justified uh, in Christ as neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, nor, nor, nor free but all in all, we're justified by faith. So the Gentiles... Once the Lord saves the last Gentile, we're out of here. We're raptured. And Jerusalem was also trodden down by the Gentiles. Now, why am I saying all this? 
because Jesus was not talking to Gentiles. He was not talking to, to, to those that he was talking to the national Israel, not the church. Those that are trying to put a rapture in chapter 24, it has nothing to do with the rapture. It has to do with the second coming. In the rapture, he comes for his saints. In, in his second coming, in the 19th chapter of Revelation, he, he comes back with his saints to set up the kingdom of God that we're talking about. The, the, the saints, New Jerusalem, the church, the kingdom of heaven, comes down out of heaven, and we shall reign on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will is now done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, only a few of, uh, of the generation, only a few Jews have gone back to, to Palestine. But all of them will not be regathered until... The Antichrist does what he's going to do. Matter of fact, let's, let's read uh, Revelation 11. Because actually, Matthew 24 uh, is the revelation. You, you, there's a pattern that we're, that we're going to see. Revelation 11. Jerusalem will be trodden underfoot during the days of the Antichrist. That Antichrist will not be revealed until we're out of here. And then that, that starts the seven years of tribulation. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood and said, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar, and them that worship therein. Jews. Jews only. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for who is it given to? The Gentiles. And what are they going to do? What are they going to do? What are those Gentiles outside of the temple going to do? In God's permissive will, it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months, three and one half years of the seven year tribulation. Half of the tribulation will be war. War. The Gentile, the God is going to allow the Gentiles to come against his disobedient children because the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, and Israel disobeyed God. And let's go to back to back to twenty four twenty four and three. Because now now what do we say in two? See verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that should not be thrown down. That's going to be war by Gentiles in Jerusalem and the holy city. And, and see, he's talking about 
the second coming, not the rapture. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us. They didn't understand either. Tell us. When shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Three questions. And what were they? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of your coming? And what's going to be the sign of the end of the world? You, you see that? You see that? Now, let's pay attention. What answer did Jesus give? What did he say? Take heed, pay attention, that no man deceive you. Don't let nobody deceive you. For many shall come in my name. Everybody talking about Jesus. Uh uh, uh uh. They'll come in my name. They come in my name. Saying. Saying what? I'm Christ. I'm God. I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See, to be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Wait a minute. This is the permissive will of God in Revelation 6 that, that, that fulfills what he just said. Go to Revelation 6. I told you. Matthew 24 is the revelation. Jesus already told, was teaching the disciples what was going to happen, but they didn't get it. And I'll, I'll prove it in a minute. They didn't get it. It's like people now don't get it. What happens in chapter 6? Because Jesus said, Men shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive, shall deceive. You didn't say going to fight them. He wasn't going to fight. Shall deceive. He's going to be a smooth operator, a smooth tongue. Oh, just, just honey just dripping off his, of off his tongue. Shall deceive many, and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's backwards. Usually you hear the rumor before there's a war. But war is going to be immediately, and, and rumors of more wars. And don't be troubled for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, this is fulfilled in chapter 6 of Revelation. Because when those seals are open, when that first seal is open, he heard, as it were, see, God's voice is thunder. One of the, the, the and as it were, the noise of thunder and one of the four beasts saying, come and see. The beasts are living creatures. We call, call them zoi. If we get the word zoology, living creatures. And I saw and behold a white horse. And he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him. This is the Antichrist operating under the permissive will of God. This begins his escapades for, for seven years. A crown was given to him. And he went forth conquering to conquer. But what? But I, I, I purposely bypassed something. He was on that white horse. But what, what did he have? He that said on him, what did he have? A bow. No arrow. He didn't come to fight. He came to deceive. He's deceiving you that he has more power than he has. He has no arrow. 
no, he he has no arrow, but but he has influence because there there are some other horses following him. Okay, other horses. Because uh, Matt, uh, Matthew twenty four and six, and stay, stay in stay in Genesis six, twenty four and six, and used to hear of wars and rumors of war. And don't be troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. This is just the beginning of three and one half years of tribulation, but it's not the great tribulation. This is just a start. Now, he, he, said, he, he said you should hear of wars and rules of wars. Let's look at what that uh, second horse was all about. In, in the Revelation uh, 6 and 4, when that second seal was opened, the, the crown was given to him by God himself. He allows him. He has one crown. He allows him. And he got that crown by, by, over, over, by, by conquering other nations. And, they, and to the permission will of God, they made him king. But he only has one crown. He, he comes, so many say that I am, I am the Christ. He comes as a fake Christ because he, he's riding a white horse like Jesus in, is in Revelation 19. But the giveaway is he only has one crown. Jesus has many crowns and, and because he, he's finally king of kings and Lord of Lords. But it, the crown was given to him. Keep in mind the tribulation period. Everything that happens. Is in the permissive. Not the perfect. The permissive will of God. Because he came unto his own. And his own received him not. But as many as did to them. He gave the power to become the sons of God. Very few Jews even today accept him as the Messiah. So in the permissive will of God to get them to come to the Messiah, the tribulation period is not so much for punishment, it's, it's to compel them to accept the fact that the Messiah has already come. They're looking for someone that, that, that has already, already come, but they rejected him. He came unto his own. His own received him not. And even while he was here, he talked about leaving the ninety and nine and, and fulfilling his purpose, going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He didn't say he's going to Israel, but the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the same way the prodigal son left the house, the, the, when he finally came, he was received. Now, what? The lost sheep. I told you last uh, week that who the, who the uh, lost sheep was. It's, it's Judah, the tribe of Judah, where Jesus came from, where you and I come from. Zechariah, I know y'all read that. That's, that's, that's in the Old Testament near, 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 the, near the end, right before Malachi and all that. Zechariah 2, verse 11 and 12 says, And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of them, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee, and the Lord shall in, inherit Judah, his portion, in the Holy Land. Judah is special. Now, let's get back to this war and rumors of war. That, that horse in Revelation 6 and 4 was red, bloody red. 
and power was given unto him. Permissive will of God. Power was given to him, the Satan, to take peace from the earth. See, see, the Lord came in peace. The Prince of Peace came. Now, he did all that he can do. See, this is during the tribulation period. He did all that he could do. But now that he's gone, okay, do what you want to do. I'm giving you power. And he took peace from the earth. And did Jesus not say wars and rumors of war? And what they do, and that they should kill one another. Kill one another. And that was given unto the one that rode that horse, that, that, that uh, the horse of war, what did he have? The, something that the Antichrist did not have. The Antichrist can, can persuade you with his tongue. But this red horse ain't playing. Somebody's going to get killed. Wars and rumors of war. And back to uh, Matthew 24 and 6, you should hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't be troubled. But we ain't going to be here. But I'm talking about, he's talking about the Jewish nation. He's not even talking to you. I want you to understand that he's talking to Israel. The 24th chapter and the 25th chapter of Matthew is for Israel, but it's also for you. Because there's certain things we need to do in the kingdom right now as kings and priests to, to uh, spiritually to prepare ourselves to rule on earth with him as kings and priests. But now, don't be troubled. This is just the beginning. This is just the first three and one half years of the tribulation period. You still with me? Now, quote this as it's written and not as folk have been saying it. Nation singular shall rise against nation singular and kingdom against kingdom. Stop right there. What nation? What kingdom? Go to Genesis 25. We're t I told you this is talking about Israel now. Israel's going to be fighting somebody. Uh, okay, uh, Genesis 25. <sighs> And when Isaac took Rebekah, the wife, in the 20th verse, she was the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian. You see that? The Syrian. That's very important. And what happened in the womb in verse 22? The war started right there. They struggled within Rebecca's womb. And she said, why am I like this? And she went to talk to God. And what did the Lord tell her in, in verse 23? The Lord said unto her, two nations. Two nations. Just two. Two nations of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. The war go, go, go back to go back to Matthew. Matthew twenty four and seven. One nation against another nation. One kingdom against another kingdom. It doesn't say nations against nations and kingdoms. This is a war between Syria, from wh where the Antichrist will come, and Israel. 
He's talking to Israel. That will be, and what's going to happen after, what happens when war comes? What happens? There shall be famines, COVID, pestilence, mm -hmm, earthquakes in different places. And this is just the beginning of the tribulation period. This is just the first three and one and a half years. Now go back, go back to, uh, to uh, Revelation 6. Because it talks about pestilence, famines, the fi uh, verse 5, and when it opened the third seal, I heard the third Zoa or beast say, come and see. But he actually said, go. He was telling them to go. And I beheld what? A black horse. And he that sat on him had a had a pair of bowels in his hand. Scales. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts. There's another voice. A fifth voice. A measure of wheat for a penny. And three measures of barley for a penny. And see that thou don't hurt the oil or wine. There is a famine in the land. You were paying about four about Four and five dollars for a tank of gas in California is more than that. I'm to the point now where I don't buy a whole lot of chicken because they got golden chicken laying golden eggs because everything is high. You've gone through situations, and I still wear my mask. Y'all crazy? If you, if, let me tell y'all something. They can, they can, they can name what's going on now. The flu or. S S S U V S R V V V V. I don't know what it is. They can call it anything they want to call it, but COVID ain't go go nowhere. They are using this to put another shot in you. You don't know what's in that stuff to control you. How many how many boosters do you have to boost a booster? Come on, come on. What the and COVID is nothing but a pestilence. I gave you Second Chronicles 7 and 13. When I set up heaven, let there be no rain. When I send locusts to devour the land. When I send pestilence, COVID, pandemic, flu, monkey flu, flu flu. Who, what? Among my people. We're not, we're not going to escape it. We, this, that, see, this is just a church age. It's going to be worse than among my people. And, the, uh, and, and you're trying to, to, to give boosters and, and things and medication, but that's, that's not the answer. The 14th verse says, if my people that are called by my name. Come on, Israel. What armor themselves? Pray. Seek my face, which is his will, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin. Then I will heal the land. Ain't no healing going to happen because, y'all, we, I can't even get, get folk to meet. I, I, I had a preacher. I said, I said, but while this stuff was going on, I said, we need to, we need to meet, we need to come together. But, but, but see, I'm just a, a not a prophet, but I'm just a voice crying out in the, in the wilderness. I don't have a big congregation. I'm not going to have no, uh, <laughs> Chinese auction. I'm not going to, I'm 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 not going to, to, to have crazy crazy things. The church has become polluted. Even right now, it doesn't even look like a church. It's decorated with Satan's tools from Christ's mass, and you're not supposed to bring anything in the sanctuary other than what God has ordained, the altar and thing. You are no, that's another story. 
But until we obey God, until we humble ourselves, it ain't over. It's not over. You can say, well, but you, 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 are, you, 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 preaching doom. I sure am. I sure am. Because I, I meant to look up that, that, that scripture in Jeremiah. God create good and he create evil. And he, he sent an evil spirit upon Saul and he has sent a curse upon this United States because of what is going on. He, he is not going to keep allowing the court system to overrule him. He is the supreme court. Let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. But I told y'all before it happened. I told y'all before it happened. Fill your freezers. I told y'all before it happened. I was in Virginia then. Okay. These folks are going to try to get all the water, all the toilet paper. Y'all thought I was just talking. I, 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 and I told folk a couple of months ago, when China, with, with this cotton situation, that they were going, they're going to withhold stuff for it, where women can't even get feminine and products. And it has occurred. Famines. Pestilence. Three dollars and sixty some cents for a dozen eggs. Eighteen, sixteen, eighteen dollars for, for 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 them cluck cluck clucks that used to be two and three dollars. But my my freezer's full. I saw this coming. I'm eating good because and that money y'all y'all spending for, for for this unreal Christ mass and. Satan clothes and uh, y'all better save your money. You're gonna be broke over stupidity. Spending for what? It ain't your birthday and ain't his either. But he's allowing you to do what you want to do to the fullness of the Gentiles till he's had enough. It's going to be just like he was with Adam. And get this straight. It repented him, not that he made men, but he made man, the man that I created. Adam was one sinful man. And it repented the Lord that I made him. Um, repent me that I made the animals. He's out there with the beasts of the fields. Yeah, read, read your Bible. Bestiality. He is not in the in Hebrews eleven with the faithful because he he and Seth never repented. They were bad examples. He said, "I'm going to give Adam what help me, Holy Ghost." Adam was eight hundred and ten years old when the Lord says, "If you don't get right within the next one hundred twenty years, I'm going to destroy this earth with a flood." It had nothing to do with Noah. It had to do with Adam's disobedience. When Adam was 930 years old, 120 years later, God kept his promise and the flood came. The, wa the waters from, from above and the waters from below came, came together after, after 100, after 100, 100 years. It wasn't 120. It had nothing to do with Noah. Noah, Noah built the, the, the boat in 100 years and then came the flood that destroyed every man and you can't destroy spirits the spirits that was, that was in the giants remain there were giants in those days and afterward the spirits in, in those things under the sea remain because I, I put on Facebook this uh, centipede that had to be about 20 feet. And God said, I'm not going to destroy again by the flood. He didn't say he wouldn't send a flood. But it's not going to be by a flood, but it's going to be fire next time. The heavens are going to be on fire. 
because of the wickedness of man. Let me get back at this. It says, uh, in the tribulation period, in that verse 6, a measure of wheat for a penny, three measures of barley for a penny, and don't hurt the oil and wine. He's talking about, he is talking about the olive oil that's going to be used in the, in, in the temples uh, during, during the tribulation, in, in teaching. The olive oil is sacred, and, and, and we will drink wine at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And not, you alcoholics, it's not, it's not that kind of wine. The wine, Jesus said he will not partake of the fruit of the vine again to drink it with us in the kingdom on earth. On earth. And man will only be able to feed himself. If, 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 if money is that low, you better, better learn how to carpool. You better have a carpool. And, and you better break bread together. Because you're not going to be able to afford a meal. A man's not going to be better to be able to afford to feed himself. So don't be making no babies. Now, you said that nation rise against nation. King, kingdom, nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Do we not, not just discuss that in, in Revelation 6? And pestilence. Do we, we discuss that. And there will be earthquakes in different places. That's going to be a big earthquake during that time. We'll discuss that later on. And now, now, <laughs> stay in Revelation 6 because in, in 24... Matthew 24 and 8 said, these are just the beginning of sorrows. This is just the first three and one half years of the tribulation period. Then they should deliver you up to be afflicted. And they're going to kill you. I'm so glad we're raptured. And ye shall be hated now, not just those two nations, but of all nations, Israel's going to be hated of all nations for his name's sake. And then, many, and then shall many be offended and start betraying one another. Hate one another. Brother and sister fighting, fighting. Which, which we do now? I got some family members love to see me in hell. But keep, on, keep on wishing. Now, Go back to Revelation 6. Because they did not talk about death. They should deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Re go back to Revelation 6. Verse 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And what was... <laughs> the rider on this one had a name. See, the Antichrist comes... To he, he's deceptive. But this one has a name. His name that set on him was what? Death. And hell followed with him. As soon as they died, as soon as they died, they, they, they had rejected the Messiah. They went straight to hell. That's why I tell the devil to go all the time. Because that's his, that's his final place. Hell followed them. And, okay, what, they should deliver you up to be afflicted and should kill you and behave of all nations for my name's sake. Okay. Uh, all power was given unto them. Permissive will of God, y'all. Permissive will. Over just one fourth, one just one fourth of the of the whole earth, billions of people to kill with what? The sword, rockets, atomic bombs, and with what? Hunger, starving to death, and with what? Death, like the the COVID one, ain't nothing but death. 
and with the beast of the earth. That means they're going to kill you. you there's some, some uh, chicken and stuff you couldn't eat because it, was, it, it, it would kill you. Oh, God, help me with this. Help me, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, they were killing. They were killing. And Israel will be hated of all nations. That's God's doing. Because nations are going to come against Jerusalem by the permissive will of God. And, and, and after a while, God's going to turn against those nations and, and run them out. And only about a third of, of the folk will remain in Jerusalem. I don't have the scripture, but it's there. Now, go back to uh, Matthew 24 and 10. Because it's not going to be just <laughs> the enemy killing you. Do you, you understand what we read in the 10th verse? And then shall many be offended and betray one another. Like black folk do now. We're, kill, we're killing our own. Yeah, I said it. And shall hate one another. Hate you for nothing. You ain't done nothing wrong. They don't like what you stand for. And after that, what's going to happen? Many false prophets. See, after Antichrist comes, there will be many false prophets. They're going to <laughs> going to, to arise and shall deceive many. Deception. And there, there are no prophets now, but that, that, that's, some, that, that's some false Christ deceiving folk. Just because they can hoop or they sound good as a, as a big congregation, oh, you believe anything, anything that they say. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better wake up. And deception. That's an <laughs> And what's going to happen to these beasts? And what's going to happen to these false prophets? I'm glad you asked. Go to Revelation 19 and 20. Because this rascal makes a mistake. Matter of fact, uh, uh, look at the 19th verse of the, of the 19th chapter. I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. The battle of Armageddon is not going to be a gathering. They're going to gather in the valley of, of Megiddo and the Lord's going to destroy them just like that. But what about the what about that, that false prophet? Verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. The the false prophet got down to do it in front of the beast, and which deceived them that had the mark of the beast that, that we talked about in the 13th chapter of Revelation, and them that worshiped his image, Christmas tree. They both were cast alive, cast alive in the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And those that were left were slain with the sword of, of Jesus himself when, when he came to that 19th chapter, Revelation, that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with flesh. We need to understand that thanks be to God, we're in the kingdom of heaven right now. We will not face this. We will be with him in the heavens. That's why I've been teaching and emphasizing, I'm going to say it over and over and over until you get it. Before this tribulation, seven-year tribulation begins, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. 
Oops. The catch. The catch of God. Uh, the one folk will be caught off God. With a shout. Shout that will penetrate the graves. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel. And with the trump of God. The trump is used in, in Israel as, as a call, like the Pentecost, to, to, to gather the people. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Mama them, grandmama them. Because when he comes, that spirit, that, that, he that lives and believes in me should never die. Robert Brown will never die, that, according to God's word. He's going, the same God, I tell you, that exhaled and put his spirit in me, is going to inhale and take me back to be with him. And when he comes back, that glory, I will receive the glorified body from that spirit. It, it was sown a natural body and raise a spiritual body. The dead in Christ shall rise first, not that old body, but we've gone from glory to glory. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, walking around on earth, shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, not in heaven, because the kingdom of of God has not been set up because the kingdom of heaven is in the clouds. That's where you are. In the rapture, the kingdom of heaven is preparing after seven years, after the tribulation period, to, to, to come down into the kingdom of God. They will be one. And we shall reign on the earth. Caught up. Disappeared. And no, it's not going to be a silent affair. No, these folk, these folk are going to see it. Folk left out, they're going to see it. He's not hiding anything. Everyone will hear his voice. But not everyone will be caught up. Only the church, only the kingdom of heaven is caught up to get ready to come down to, to, to be the kingdom of God. Now, Lord have mercy. <laughs> go back to go back to Matthew twenty four. Because after, after and the twelfth verse after the many false prophets arise and deceive many, and because iniquity, lawlessness shall abound. The love of many should wax cold. You're not even going to love your own folk, much less somebody else. Now, now, thank you, Judy. I, 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 I almost forgot something. Be careful about the songs that you sing. Our great day is being called up to meet him in the air. But this song that has been sung in our black church, my Lord's getting us ready for that great day. Who shall be able to stand? The sky will be falling. Rocks will be falling. Mountains will be falling in that great day. Let's talk about the tribulation period. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is, is during the tribulation period when these things will be happening. Now, <laughs> I'm trying. Love, it's already, it's already started. The love, because iniquity shall abound. Folk are just vicious now. I don't know of a day that's gone by when, when I haven't heard about somebody killing somebody, babies being raped. Baby, oh, God, for, help these folk, help these folk. The love of man shall wax cold. That's a slow process. Grow cold. But he, underline this and get it right, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It's talking about to the end of the tribulation period will be saved from the tribulation. Will be saved. 
the Lord is going to get, and we're going, and we're going to talk about that uh, next week because what we need to understand is that <laughs> two shall be in the in the field. One will be taken, and the other be left. The gathering into the kingdom is his work, and the other will be left to be cast into the lake. Help me, Holy Ghost. Now, <laughs> and this gospel, this gospel, we're going to, verse 14, this gospel of what? The kingdom. He's talking about the kingdom of God now. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. He's talking about a one-time preaching of the gospel during the tribulation period. Go to Revelation 14 and 6, and we, we've, got, we've got to close. Revelation 14 and 6. This gospel of the kingdom, that's, that's the only gospel that's going to be preached. This gospel of the kingdom. Because after the 144,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel do their preaching, and a number that no man could number came out of the great tribulation period, God is still going to give them one more chance. One more chance. What does the sixth verse say? There's going to be a one-time preaching of the gospel, of the kingdom. And I saw another angel fly in the mist. You need no wings. Fly in the mist of heaven. Having what? The everlasting gospel of the king to, do, <laughs> to preach to them that dwell on earth. Not just the Jews. Not just the Jews. But to every nation and kindred and tongue. And people. And what does he say? Says a loud voice, fear God. Give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Who is that? Jesus himself. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. God sent, he has sent his son to the world to condemn the world but that all the world should be saved. During creation, the son was with the father. You were, he's going to get ready to sit on the throne. One more time. The gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 24, shall be preached. In all the world. It, it, that not just happened in, in Revelation 14. In all the world for a witness, not just to the Jews, but to what? All nations. And then, and then, the seven-year tribulation will be complete. Let's stop right there. Because the, there's a difference between the tribulation Two and a half years, and the great tribulation, which we're going to discuss in, uh, discuss Friday, because Matthew twenty four is the revelation of Jesus Christ that He revealed in in, in in the book of Revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ is what we're talking about, which God gave unto Him, Him who, John, yeah, to show unto His servants, me and you, things which must shortly come to pass. He's revealing it to us right here. All right. We're good. We did. We did 14 verses. There's so much, so much more to this story. As Paul Harvey, you say, now for the rest of the story. <laughs> Father God, it's in the name of Jesus. I come to you again, thanking you for this time and this privilege of 
pray, Lord, that nothing was done or said for vainglory, but is the unadulterated word of God, clean and pure. I pray, God, for your anointing upon your people today as they digest this word, as they read the scripture, that you put insight on the revelation and that they, that they are exposed to the truth of the gospel. We thank you, Lord, that we are right now in the kingdom of heaven. And right now we are the sons of God. Right now it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when you appear, we're going to be like you. We're going to see as you really are. And I'm thankful for that. We glorify your name. We praise you in Jesus' name. I'm thankful for those of you that are with me. And I'm asking you, please come back uh, Friday because we're not through a fifth of it yet. Because Jesus is revealing to every child of God what's going to happen during the kingdom on earth. If there's one today that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, let me show you the simplicity of the gospel. If you believe in your heart, it's a heart thing, it's a believing thing. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. By grace are you saved through faith. It's nothing, it's nothing that we can do. It's not ourselves. It's the gift. It's the gift of God. He gives it to you. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins. God upon the third day. And confess with your mouth. Romans 10 read, Thou will be saved. For with the heart man believes unto salvation. He believes as a man believes. And with the mouth confession is made. See how simple that is? And you churches that have made it difficult with these tiring services and you got to act like I, I, I act or say what I say. You're a liar. Jesus Christ said, come unto me, all you that labor heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Jesus himself said, all that will come unto me, I will know why it's cast out. You don't have the authority to cast out what Jesus does. He wants you to come to him. He loves you. Will you come to him? You have longed for sweet peace. <laughs> and your faith... To increase, you have earnest, the fervent, the pray, but to do his good will, he abides with us still. When you're all on the altar is laid, is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only, only be blessed. Have peace and sweet rest as you give him your body and soul. Thank you, Nisi. <laughs> God bless you. Bless you all those that can. I'll see you Friday, the Sabbath at 6.